Hello, I'm Kay from the Spectra team, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the Spectra Visual Website Builder Basics. Now, this video is part of a course organized in a playlist, which you will find a link in the description below. And if you want to get the most out of it, I strongly encourage you to follow this course in the exact order the videos are organized in the playlist. Now, in order to help you complete this project, you find the link in the description of this video where you can download the course files. Now, the difference with popular builders such as Elementor or Divi is that they add their own code base on top of the WordPress core editor. So it's more code, it's a dedicated UI, whereas Spectra uses the WordPress core editor. So the learning curve is going to be easier and it's also going to be a faster option. Now for this course, we will be using the free version of Spectra. So even if you use the free version, you can totally complete the course website project. But if you're using the pro version of Spectra, I will even show you how you can further enhance your pages. And if you're wondering what are the differences between Spectra and Spectra Pro? Well, Spectra and its free version is already awesome. But with Spectra Pro, you get features like dynamic content and the loop builder to build custom dynamic websites, the pop-up builder with unlimited creativity, enhanced animation to bring your website to life, Image Gallery Pro for additional features like one-click redirects, Instagram blocks to add your Instagram feed into your website, countdown timers to boost conversion, Slider Pro to add stunning sliders, user registration and user login to customize these essential WordPress forms, models to create modern and customizable models, global block styles, and much, much more. So if you want to build amazing websites with Spectra Pro, check out the link in the description below. Now in this video, we will also talk about Spectra AI and how it can significantly help you build your website. But like I said, if you're using the free version of Spectra, no panic, you'll still be able to complete today's video and the rest of this course. So let's get started. Okay, first, what is Spectra? Well, as mentioned earlier in this video, Spectra is a visual website builder. And if I can give you an example, if you ever played with Legos, whether physical Legos or in video games, you will know what I'm talking about because basically Spectra is going to use blocks to build your website pages. So for example, if you wanted to build this building with Legos, you'd have to start with the foundation and then you would need different types of blocks to build the whole thing. Well, the same goes for the Spectra Visual Website Builder and I'm gonna show you how. So first of all, there are two ways you can edit your pages in WordPress. The first way is to hover over the name of your website and click on Visit Site. Then navigate to the page you want to edit and click on edit page. Now the other way to do it, let's go back to our dashboard and then just go to pages, all pages. And now you hover over the name of the page you want to edit and just click on edit. But right now we're going to create a new page. So click on add new page. Now let's call this page new. Now at this point, our page is not published. It's a draft. So if you just want to save it as a draft, click here on save draft. It will be visible for you as an administrator of the website, but it won't be visible to the public. Now, if you want the page to be visible to the public, click on publish and publish one more time. Now I'm going to show you how to play with the blocks, but first let's take a look at the interface. So let me close this. And here in the top right corner, if I click on the three dots, we have many options, but the ones we are interested in are Spectra page settings and AI Assistant. We'll talk about AI Assistant later, but right now let's focus on Spectra. So if I click on Spectra page settings, which by the way, you can also access by clicking this icon here, you can see here we can add custom CSS. Now CSS allows you to style many elements, but if you don't know what CSS need, you probably don't need it. And the good news is that with Spectra anyways, there are so many options to customize the styles that you probably won't need CSS. But hey, in case you need it, you have the option here. Next, we see the Astra settings icon here. Now we're using Astra for this course, but everything is already set up because we used starter templates. So this is what you get here. But like I said, it's already set. Next, we have the AI assistant. And like I said, we'll talk about it later in this video, just like for the design library that you see here. Next, this icon allows us to open the settings panel, which you will need when you build content. But sometimes you may want to see the full canvas of what you're working on. So you may want to toggle it on or off. So let me put it back on. Next, we have the view page icon. So if I click on it, it's going to show us a preview of our page, even before we actually publish it or save it. And right now there's nothing on the page because we didn't add anything yet. 
So let me close this. Next, we have the responsive view. So by default, it's on desktop, but I can change it to tablet or mobile. And that's super handy because in this day and age, your website has to be responsive. It has to look good on desktop, tablet, and mobile. So let's go back into desktop mode. Next, we have the design library. And as mentioned, we'll talk about this later. Next, we have the document overview toggle. And that's super handy to see the structure of your page. You're going to see it when we start adding containers and blocks. So let me close this. Next, we have the redo and undo button. So for example, let me type something and then I just want to undo it. I just click there or I want to redo it. And there you go. So let me undo that. Next, we have our tools icon, but we're going to leave it as is. And finally, the plus sign here is for our blocks, our famous blocks. Like I showed you with the Lego blocks, now we have our Spectra blocks. Now there are other blocks like the WordPress core blocks. If I scroll down, you see all the blocks with the black color here are from WordPress core. Whereas the Spectra blocks have this blue color. Now there are many blocks you see here, container, heading, image, countdown, block quote. There are so many blocks with different features and abilities. So for example, let me drag an image block right here. And then I can upload an image or check the image from the media library. So let me use this one, for example, click on select and there you go. Now let me click on the plus sign again. And now let me drag a heading. And one thing you notice is that when you select a block, the side panel changes here. So first of all, here at the top, you can see the name of the actual block. So if I click here on the image, you can see the name changed. Now it's the image block. Then we have three sub tabs. We have general style and advanced. So general, as the name says, going to be the general settings. Like in this case, we have the alignment left, middle, right. You have the type of layout. You can change the side of the images, basically all the basic settings. Next, we have the style. So if I go to the style tab here, I could add a border. For example, let me click on solid. Let me add 10 pixels all around. And now you can see we have this border here. So I can also change the color. Let's say I want to make it red. And when we hover over the image, I can also change that setting and let me make it green, for example. So now when we hover over the image, as you can see, the color changes. Now there are more settings we can play with. For example, we can add a margin of 40 pixels all around this image. Let me put it back the way it was. We can add a box shadow. You get the idea. Now, for each block, you're going to have different style settings. So, for example, if I select my heading here on top, you can see if I go to style, the settings are different. Here we can change the color. We can change the typography. So, for example, if I click on typography, I can change the font size. I can add a text shadow if I wanted. But let me remove this. Now, if we turn this heading into a link in the general tab, then in the style tab, we can change the link color. We can change the highlight background and spacing options. But you get the idea, depending on which block you're using, you're going to have a different set of options, whether in the general style or advanced tab. Now, some things are common, but many are different. Next, we have the advanced tab. And as the name suggests, it's a bit more advanced. So more than likely, you won't need this. But for example, here you can add animations, you can set the responsive conditions. So for example, you could say, I want to show this photo here. So let me go back on advanced. You could say, I want to show this photo on desktop, but I don't want to show it on tablet. So let me hide it on tablet. Let me click on update. And now let me click on preview. So as you can see here on the desktop, the image is fine. I can see it right here. But now let's go into inspect mode. And let me change this to an iPad mini. And as you can see, the image disappeared. And that's because we enabled this option here. So let me put it back the way it was. And let me click on update to save my work. And next we have other options like Z index or HTML anchor. And about the HTML anchor, we'll actually see that later on in the course. And instead of you trying to remember all of that, no panic, it will be way easier once we use it for our website project. Now, let's talk about containers. So 
first of all, as you can see here, we added a text, we added an image, we can add a button, we can add anything we want. But let's say we want a more complex layout. So let's say we want the image on the left hand side, we want the text on the right hand side, we want a button just below the text. How would you do this? And that's where containers come in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this. So as you can see, when I click here on the heading, I have a toolbar here. I have different options. I can change the order of the element on the page. I can paste and copy styles. I can highlight text. I can use the AI assistant and I can also make the text bold, italic, turn it into a link, yada, yada, yada. So many options that also depend on which block you're clicking on. But right here, we have three dots. We have the options and I can just hit delete. The other way to delete something is to go into the document overview. You can see our image here. I can click on the three dots and we have the same contextual menu. So let me hit delete. And next, let me click on the plus sign. And here I'm going to click on container. So now I need to choose which structure. So basically here I have left and right. Here I have three containers. It looks like columns, but really it's a container with three sub containers. And as you can see, we have different types of layouts. So let me go with a simple one. Let me choose this one. Now let me open the document overview. And as I told you, here I have the main container. And then I have two sub containers. Now, one of the good practices, especially if you do it early on, is going to be super easy. Just click on the three dots of the container, click on rename, and let's call it main container. Then hit save. And next, let's rename these sub containers. So same thing, let me click on rename and let's call it container A. And for the second one, rename, and let's call it container B. And that's going to be way easier down the line, especially when you have more complex pages and a bigger website. It's going to be super easy because as you will see later on in this course, when we talk about responsive websites, it's going to make it easier to transition from desktop layout to tablet layout and mobile layout. All right. So let me click on the plus sign again. And now let me select an image block. And as you can see, when you hover over a block, you get a preview and it's going to tell you exactly what it is and what it does. So let me just drag the image block here in the first sub container, which is container A. Now let's click on media library and let's select this image. Then click on select. As you can see here, there is also a plus sign here where I can add a block. So for example, if I want to add a heading, I can just click here and there you go. Now, personally, I prefer using the plus sign here, but it's really up to you. So let me click on the plus sign. And now I want to add a button. So I'm just going to drag a buttons group right below the heading. And like I mentioned, it's a buttons group, not just one button. Here you see one button, but let me open the document overview. And as you can see, it says buttons. And if I expand this, we can see we have one button. Now, one thing I could do is click here on the three dots for the options and hit duplicate. And now I have two buttons. So right now you can't really see what's on the buttons because we haven't fixed the colors yet, but don't worry, we're going to do it in a moment. So for the time being, let me just remove that button I just added by hitting delete. But don't forget, you could also have hit undo and redo buttons. Okay, so now we got all the content we need for this container and the two sub containers. Now, where is the magic? Well, let me show you. So first of all, we're going to select our main container and that's where it's handy that we renamed it because we know it's our main container, right? And next here in the general tab, I'm going to close the container type sub tab and open the layout sub tab. So now take a look with just one click. I'm going to change the direction of the content. So here, and as you can see now, the content is ordered in a column style, or I can go back in a row style. I could also go in a row reverse like this, just one click or column reverse. So as you can see, this is super handy. In just one click, you can completely change the flow of the content. So let me go back into the row direction. Now here you see align items. And right now items are aligned in the center, but I can change it to start or bottom. I can also stretch the content, but I'm just going to put it back to center. And when it comes to justify content, it's the same thing, but on the horizontal alignment. So you can have it at the start, at the end, 
You can have space between, space around, or space evenly. But if you're interested in this topic, we created a full video on the topic. So I'll put a link to this video in the description below. Next, how to edit content with the spectra blocks. So let's start with the text block. Let me click here and actually, sorry to disappoint you, but it's just super easy. You just type whatever you want and that's it. As simple as that. And as we already show, you can go to the style tab. You can change the color. You can change the typography so you can change the size or you could say, let me select this and let me make it bold, for example. But I advise you stay pretty conservative with all these cosmetic changes because you can quickly get out of hand. But still, you have the freedom to do so. So let me use my undo buttons. Next, talking about buttons, let's see how we can change our button here. So first of all, let me click on my button. And remember here in the document overview, you can see we have the button itself and we have the buttons group. So let me click on the buttons group and within the buttons group, I can select the alignment and the button size. So for example, here, let me make it medium, large, extra large. So once again, let me undo this. And next, when you come to the style, here I can change the typography and the spacing of the button but I'm not going to do that now. Now, if I click here on the button itself, I have some presets. So I could pick this one, for example, this one, you get the idea. And now our text is visible. Now, let me scroll down, click on the content sub tab. And first of all, let me change the label here. So I'm just going to double click and type Google. And next to add a link to this button, where you see link here, I'm going to remove the pound sign and I'm just going to paste the URL I want the button to take us to. In this case, google.com. Now I can even specify if I want to open it in a new window. All I need to do is toggle this option. And next for search engine optimization purposes, I can decide to add no follow to the link and I can even remove the label if I want to. So let me click on update and let's preview our page. And now when I click on the button, it takes us to google.com as expected. So let me close this. Now, if you want to edit the colors, you should know what to do now. Just select your button, go to style. And once again, we selected the individual button, not the buttons group. So we're in style and we can change the color. So color will be the color of the text, but it's pretty fine here with this color and then the hover color, which is the color that the user will see when they hover over the button. Once again, we are going to leave it like this. Next, we can change the typography, but we're not going to do it here. And we can change the background. So if I click on the background sub tab, here we see the normal color. So by default, it's using the theme colors, but we can specify it here. So either a random color or our global color palette from the Astro theme. So let me pick, actually, let me pick this one, color number four. And for the hover state, let me pick color number one. So now when you hover over it, as you can see, you can see the difference. Same thing for the border. Let's make it match. So for the normal color, let's pick color number four. And for the hover color, let's pick color number one. Okay, so it looks better now. Now, if you recall, we use the preset in the general sub tab to change the shape of our button, but we can also control it here. If I want a border radius of three all around, you can see it's not really square. It has that little roundness now let me make it 30 all around and this is what we get so you have total control on how you want things to look and this way you can really maintain brand consistency next you can change the box shadow and the spacing and then as usual you have the advanced tab you can add animations so for example let me add a fade up animation so let me click on updates and as our page loaded the animation was initiated so let me refresh and there you go. Now we can further enhance our button. So let's go back to the general sub tab. First of all, we can toggle on inherit from theme. And this way is going to take all the options that we set in the Astra customizer. But sometimes you may want to have different buttons at different spots. One that's over an image, one that's over a plain dark background, one that's over a plain white background or light background and so on. So I'm just going to toggle this off. Let me close the preset sub tab. And back in the content sub tab, we can also enable icon. So let me click here. Here I can click on change icon and let me type 
house and here I can click on insert icon and we can also change the icon position it can either be after the text or before the text it's really up to you so let me put it back to after the text and let's click on update to save our work next images so you already saw when we added here an image block so let me click on it next let's go to the general sub tab and here we can just click on change image if we wanted to change and it would open our media library once again you can just drag and drop images here or click on upload files and if you want to change an image it's as easy as clicking on the image you want and clicking on select and there you go now i'm just going to hit undo next we can change the alignment of the image and next we have the layout option and that is super handy so this is the normal state so just an image but check this if i click on overlay now i can add a heading and a caption my heading and here is a caption so very easily you can change a simple image into a banner you can even change the content position here if i click on the little squares here you can see i can change the position of the content awesome now let me put it back to the normal state next we can change the size of the image do we want it large medium thumbnail and so on so for example if i set it to thumbnail you see the difference so let me put it back to large now you can also change the image size by dragging the handles here and selecting the size that you want next we can change the image dimension so here we could change the width and the height of the image next we can change the image role image or presentation we can add the alt text for search engine optimization we can change the title select the object fit and the on hover image status so right now it's static but let me click on zoom in and now when i hover over it as you can see we see this effect next we can decide to enable a caption and it appears right below the image here so let me toggle this off and next we can add masks so for example we have mask shapes it could be a circle a diamond an hexagon and so on you get the idea so you can get super creative with the image block but let me put it back to the way it was now the other type of images you're going to come across when you build your website is background images so for example let me select my main container here then i'm going to go to style and here we see background you see type so either we can pick a color so for example if i pick this you can see the background turns to the color now you don't see it here because there is an image but below that image if i remove it so let me show you if i remove it as you can see everything is red all right let's undo this and let's go back to where we were so i'm going to remove this color the next thing is we can add a gradient so same principle just two different colors next we have image or video now we're talking about images so let me select image click on the plus sign and let me select this image click on select and now just like we did previously with the color background now it's an image background so let me make this more obvious so what i'm going to do is i'm going to scroll down and i still have my main container selected and i'm going to go to spacing and i'm going to add a padding of 60 pixels all around so now you can see there is some space around our image here and here in the background you can see the image we just added and now let me go back to the background sub tab and we have different options so for example here i can change this dot and you see the focus of the image changes now i'm using the full width so you don't really see changing here but if i use it vertically you can see the difference now we can change the attachment so by default it's scrolling but you could say i want this image to be fixed let me click on fixed so let me click on update and click on the preview icon and now as i scroll as you can see the image stays fixed in the background so you can create pretty cool effects with that let me put it back to scroll and next here we can change the repeat option so by default it says no repeat but we could say it has to be repeated both vertically and horizontally but let's leave it the way it is and next for the size by default it's set to cover we could set it to contain or custom and if you choose custom you can change the width here but let's put it back to cover 
Next, you can add an overlay, and that's super handy. So for example, let me click here on color. We have three options, color, gradient, or image. So let me click on color. And as you can see, it added an overlay color. And now our text is more visible. But now let's say we turn our text into white. Not visible anymore. So let me select my main container again. Let's go back to where we were. And now let me pick a darker overlay color. And as you can see, now it's visible. But now our image is not visible, right? in the background. Easy. Just change the overlay opacity and there you go. We can see our image again. Now there are many more options like color, border, box shadow. You can also add shape dividers. So let's say that at the bottom, for example. So let me click here on bottom. Then let's say I want wave patterns. Let me change the color of the wave patterns. And you can see them here at the bottom. I can change the height. And once again, can very easily style the content with images. But for the time being, let me remove this. Now, as mentioned later in the course, I will show you how to make your website responsive because right now, if you go into tablet mode, it's still okay, but you can see it's not really tailored for tablet. And if we go to the mobile mode, it's even more obvious. The spacing around the edges is too large. The text is not appropriate. We need to change this, but it's super easy. And once again, we'll see that later on in this course. Now, at the beginning of this video, I told you I will show you how you can spice up your pages even further with Spectre Pro. So first of all, let's install Spectre Pro. So let's go to plugins, add new plugin, upload plugin, and next choose the file you receive when you got Spectre Pro. Click on open, click install now, and activate. Next, paste your license key and click activate. Next, go to Pages, All Pages, and you recall the page we created, which is called New. Click on Edit. Now, let's select our image block here, then go to Advanced, Animations, and in the dropdown, let's select Slide Right. Next, let's select our heading here. Actually, let's change the color. So, Style, let's make it white. Next, let's go to Advanced, animations and in the drop down this time we're going to select fade down but for the animation delay we want to add 300 milliseconds next let's select our button advanced animations and in the drop down this time let's select fade up and let's give it an animation delay of 500. now at this point you may be wondering well, we already did that with the free version of Spectra, so what's different here? Well, what's different is all the other options, like the animation duration, the animation delay. Like, for example, let me select our image. I saw that the animation was a bit too speedy, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to change from 400 to 1000, so it's one second. Now, let me click on Update, and let's preview your page. So as you can see now, we have more control over when the elements appear and the length of the animation. Whereas with the free version, like here I selected the image, we can only select the animation type, but we don't have those finer controls. So if I click here, as you can see, everything happens at the same time. Now let's go back to the pro version. And once again, let's preview our page. And as you can see, it's way more convenient. You can exactly decide when you want things to appear and the length of the animation. The good news is you get free animations even in the free version. If you want those finer controls, as usual, you find a link in the description below. Okay, we've talked about Spectra and Spectra Pro, but now let's talk about Spectra AI. Now, what is Spectra AI? Well, Spectra AI is like ChatGPT but for WordPress. Write copy, proofread your blog posts, translate content, write custom codes, and so many other things. But in a nutshell, Spectra AI comes with an AI system that's going to help you build your website and it also comes with a web design co-pilot with a very specific AI design library. Let me show you. So let's open a page. Let's go to Pages, All Pages. I'm going to open this one called New. And right here you see the AI Assistant icon. So let me click on it. And the AI Assistant uses a credit system. Now even on the free plan, you get 1000 free credits monthly so you can try this completely free of charge now if you need more credits you can always purchase additional credits and i will show you how in a moment 
And if you are a ZipWP Premium user, you can also use your monthly credits from your plan. So let me click on Get Started. And I'm already connected to my ZipWP account in the same browser, just in another browser tab. So if it wasn't the case, it would ask me, how do I want to connect to ZipWP? Do I want to log in or sign up? And you can sign up or log in with one click with your Google account, for example. Now, I've already done it, that's why I see this window. So I'm just going to click on Continue. All right, so now I'm connected. Let me click on the plus sign here and let me add an info box right below the heading. Now it's not really visible, so let me click on the settings panel. Let me go to style. Let me go to description and let me change the color. And now I'm going to select my text here and click on ask AI. And here I can fix grammar, rephrase, make shorter, make longer or something else. In this case, I'm going to choose something else. And it's asking me, how can I help you? So write a paragraph about why Digital Force is the best web design studio in the United States of America and click on write for me. Awesome, it came with this text. Let me click on use this and there you go. Just a couple of clicks and it's done. Now, let me show you a bit more. So I'm going to make a typo here, friendly instead of friendly. Let me select the whole text and ask AI to fix grammar. Now the grammar was already okay, but there was a typo, so the spelling wasn't right. And you can see here it fixed it. Next, I can also decide to make it longer, make it shorter. It's a bit too long, so I'm going to ask it to make it shorter. All right, let me use this. All right, much better, to the point. Now, let me select my text again, ask AI, and right from this menu, I can ask it to rephrase. And there you go. You get the idea, sky is literally the limit. Now, one neat feature also is you can change the tone. So let me click on tone, and let me change it to playful. And let's use this. So depending on your brand, it can really be a time saver. Now, another awesome feature is the translation feature. So let me select the text here, use the Ask AI, make something else, and let's translate it to French, for example. Let's make it shorter, and let's use this. Digital Force, le sorcier de la conception web aux états unis And there you go, in just a couple of clicks, we created the text, changed the tone, we shortened the text, checked for grammar, spelling, and we translated the whole thing. So just imagine the time and the money is going to save you. Now, there are many other things you can do, like custom codes and so on, but I just wanted to show you the power of the AI Assistant. Now, as I told you, the second part of the AI Assistant would be the design library. It's like you have a web designer working for you. So for that, let's click on the design library button here and I have to insist on the fact that you can use the design library without the AI feature but in that case you just get the designs and the structure now with AI this is where you can really take it to the next level let me show you so here I'm going to click on the gear icon and click on personalize library AI now once again you can get started with the free 1000 credits monthly or you can connect your existing account so first let's name the website and then click on this website is for, and let me type web design. And here I can select the main language of the website, click on continue. And next you need to describe what the website will be about. So I'm just going to paste this text. Then I can click on improve using AI. Then click on continue. Next, I can use my details. I'm not going to do that now. Click on continue. And here I can select images. So for example, I'm going to change the tag. I'm going to click on the suggested website design. And now I can select images. So even if you don't have images, all you need to do is just put in the right tag and there you go. Next, click on continue. And you'll get a prompt asking you to confirm you want to personalize the library with AI, which will cost 5,000 credits. So let me click on this. And now, as you can see, I have my design library with so many patterns I'm going to show you in a moment, but now it's tailored to the content of my website. As you can see here, elevate your online presence with digital force. And you see the images really represent web design instead of having an image that has nothing to do with the topic of the website. So right now we're waiting until the library completely syncs and all the sections are updated with that new content. 
And there you go. So let's say I want to add this pattern here. All I need to do is click on insert. And there you go. I have a beautiful hero section here. And this is another time saver because now not only can you add design patterns. So even if you're not a designer, you can completely customize your website with beautifully designed patterns. So you can add those patterns and you can let AI write the text for you, even select the images. And once you've done that, if you want to correct the text that was created, guess what? You can ask the AI assistant and we saw previously what it's capable of. And if you really want to know everything about the design library and the AI possibilities, we created a dedicated video on the topic. So I'll put a link to this video in the description below. But I think you get the idea. With Spectra AI, you can simplify content creation and boost your productivity. Now, earlier on, I briefly talked about the credit system. And as you saw, we paid 5,000 credits to personalize the whole design library. Now, if you just want to personalize one category, for example, here, the hero category, if I click here, as you can see, it costs 500 credits to personalize. So with your 1,000 free credits per month, you can personalize two categories. So you can test it for free. Now, I just show you how to add a pattern, but you can also add pages. And in this case, it's 5,000 credits for all of the pages. But let me click on skip. Or if you want to go page per page, for example, for the home page, it's going to cost 1,000 credits. So once again, if you just want to personalize one page, you can do it for free with your 1,000 credits. And the difference between patterns and a page, patterns, as we saw, for example, just the hero section or the services, whereas the page, we have all the different blocks on the page. Now, as mentioned several times before, you get 1,000 free credits per month, but if you want to buy additional credits, just go here in the top right corner and click on buy AI credits. And here, as you can see, for a little over $3 per month or $39 per year, you get 200,000 AI credits. And if you need more, you can go a little above $8 per month or $99 a year and you get 800,000 credits. Yeah. And these credits are shared between Spectra AI, the Design Library, and ZipWP. So as mentioned before, if you already have a ZipWP premium plan, like the paper use, the pro or the business, you already get AI credits and you can use those credits also with Spectra AI. So now that you know how the Spectra Visual Website Builder works, in our next video, I will show you how to edit the homepage that was installed with a starter template.